Hi, it's Danny M. So today's session is a sensory story called The Autumn Forest. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my foresty setup behind me and I've got lots of autumn things in my tuff tray. But first of all, we're going to start off with our hello song. So I hope you've got your drums and your bells ready. But remember, we don't always need them. We can use our body and you can shake anything you want. Okay, right, are we ready? Hello, hello. Can you clap your hands? Hello, hello. Can you clap your hands? Can you stretch up high? Can you stretch down low? Can you wave your hands to say hello? Hello, hello, hello. Can you bang your drum? Hello, hello. Can you bang your drum? Can you bang it fast? Can you bang it slow? Can you bang it loud? Do you say hello? Hello, hello, hello. Can you shake your bells? Hello, hello. Can you shake your bells? Can you shake them fast? Can you shake them slow? Can you shake them loud? Do you say hello? Hello, hello, hello. To everyone. Hello, hello. Let's have some fun. Right, so first of all, we're going to warm up our bodies a little bit like we always do. We've said our hello song, so now it's time to walk in the forest. Okay, so I'm going to play a little song, Walking in the Forest. Um, and I'd want you to just move your legs or move your arms. So I think at one point it says walking, so we could just walk nicely. Moving your legs or your hands if you want to as well. Um, and then I think there's stomp, so you can go a bit harder. And then we skip, so we can move a little bit faster. Like I say, you can move your arms as well. And basically it's just used to do a little warm up. Okay, right. <laughs> Take a walk in the forest. Walking in the forest, walking in the forest. We are not afraid, we're not afraid. Walking in the forest, walking in the forest. We are not afraid, we're not afraid. One step, two steps, three steps forward. One step, two steps, three steps back. out of the bush. It's got four legs. It's a deer. It's a deer. You're going to come and join in now with your walk. We're not afraid. This time I think we're going to stomp. Let's stomp. A bit bigger. A bit harder. Stomping in the forest. Stomping in the forest. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. Stomping in the forest, stomping in the forest. We're not afraid, we're not afraid. One step, two steps, three steps forward. One step, two steps, three steps back. Stop. Stop. Listen. What's that? It's an owl. Jumping in the forest, jumping in the forest. We're not afraid, we're not afraid. Jumping in the forest, jumping in the forest. We're not afraid, we're not afraid. One step, two steps, three steps forward. One step, two steps, three steps back. Stop, stop. Look. Something coming out What's of the ground that? with two big it's ears. A rabbit. It's a rabbit. We're not afraid. Let's skip. I'm going to skip this time. So as fast as movement as you can. The forest, skipping in the forest. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. Skipping in the forest. 
Skipping in the forest, we're not afraid, we're not afraid. One step, two steps, three steps forward. One step, two steps, three steps back. Stop. Listen. Listen again. What's that? It's a woodpecker. It's a woodpecker. Can you peck? Pretend to pick that wood. Go on. We're not afraid. Back to walking again now. Walking in the forest, walking in the forest. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. Walking in the forest, walking in the forest. We're not afraid. We're not afraid. One step, two steps, three steps forward. One step, two steps, three steps back. Stop. What's that smell? You smell? warm-up song in the forest. It's ready now to start the story. The Autumn Forest, a sensory story. Right, so now we've said hello, it's time to start our sensory story. So the story I chose today was an autumn forest. Okay, so I've tried to bring the outside in because I know for a lot of us at the minute we can't actually get outside. So the idea is that you imagine that you're going to go on a walk and you're going to be smelling the different smells that you'll smell. You're going to be seeing different things that you would see if you were going out for a walk. Um, you can try and feel as much as possible, as much as you can even get in your house. Okay, some things you might be able to taste and we're going to do some little bits of listening as well. Okay. And then at the end, we're going to explore different craft activities that you could do alongside this story that you might like to do at home. So, let's go for a walk. Feel the cold and misty air damp upon your face. We creep towards the forest, a calm and mystical place. So, if we're in class, we would read that slide and then we'd explore... A a range of different things linked to it okay so you've got your mystical your mystical material okay so that's sparkly and white and magical so they might explore that with the hands okay you can feel it on different parts of your body you just have it on your knee okay and then we'd also have a water spray everybody knows i love my water spray so you'd feel the cold and mystical air the damp air on your face and see if you can anticipate it coming. See if you can anticipate it falling. If you haven't got a water spray, you could just use a cold flannel just to represent the cold, damp air, okay? And you can use it on your face, on your hands. If you wanted, you could take your shoes and socks off and feel it on your feet as if you were walking on the forest bed. And to replicate the wind, you could use a fan attached to a switch if you've got a switch at home. Or you could make your own fan just with a piece of paper, really easy. Just fold it, concertina, and then you could use it as a fan just to imagine that that's the forest forest wind blowing as you're walking. Okay, we've got some sounds in the background, some different forest sounds. And you could just sit there for a minute, feeling the fan and the cold air. Take a minute to sit and watch the dusty sunbeams breaking upon leaves of yellow, brown and green. So next we're going to imagine all those dusty sunbeams as the sun starts to come up. Okay, so we can use a torch and we can start and we can do different directional patterns replicating the sun coming up through all the trees and through all the forest. So here I'm using talc, okay, but you can use flour as well because it might replicate the different, the dusty air that it said in the story. So in class we'd be doing this in front of the children, okay, and seeing if they can follow the sunbeams, watching 
through that torch light to replicate the sun. Or you could also get some nice different material, different autumn colours, get some tissue paper, get some nice. You could try shining your torch through the different materials. See if it's any different through the different colours. Crunching it up. Get it exploded. The talc or the flower all over the different materials and you get a real nice smell and sound. Have a go. Autumn is here. Leaves begin their fall softly to the ground. Brown and crunchy, yellow and crisp, all together in a mound. So you could explore lots and lots of different leaves. So here on my table, I had a very good little helper yesterday. I found lots of green leaves. I found lots of brown, crispy leaves. And we've got a range of different leaves. We could have a branch. Okay, you can have a nice feel over those different leaves. There's lots and lots of different ones out there. Some brown, some yellow. Have a feel, have a smell because some of them smell really, really nice. Okay, really have a nice foresty smell. And you can watch the leaves falling and see if you could make the leaves fall yourself. See if you could pick some up and make them fall back to the ground as if they're falling off the branches on the tree. And make them fall and you could generally just have a nice feel in your hands and see if you can make them crunch. Each tree is wrapped up safe in its armoured skin. The scaly rough bark protects the wood within. Okay, so for this you might like to go out and see if you can find some pieces of bark that have fallen off the trees on a walk. You could bring them in and have a feeling you can feel how rough they are. Okay, some might still be damp. This one's really dry because it's been in my house now for a long time. Um, or if you don't, if you can't find bark, you could just try and replicate this in a way of using something smooth and something rough in your house. Okay, and you can explain that the bark is really rough compared to something that might be really smooth. You just have a nice feel. Because later on, you could try and do some leaf. Um, some rubbings, you can get a crayon and you can put some paper over it and you can try and rub and you can see what comes out at the end. Lying cold and heavy on the soft earthy forest floor, a log old, forgotten, hard outside, rotting from the core. Okay so for this one you could explore some nice heavy logs your tray you could try and roll the logs and do some finger exercises okay try and wrap your fingers around it try and push it and pull it back just move it in general picking it up i mean sometimes it might be a little bit big but if you've got a smaller one you could pass it from hand to hand or you could have two and you could bang them together or you could just bang smaller one. See what sounds it makes. See if it makes different sounds with different twigs or logs on logs. Okay. You could lie out on the mat and you could lie down for this as if you're laying on the cold hard floor. So you could maybe put something cold underneath. Maybe some bags if you put some sandwich bags in the freezer just with a little bit of water in and then you could have them under your hands or under your feet and it would imagine and feel like you were lying on something really cold you could put them under your back if you're really brave and have a really nice sensory experience we walk further between the soaring forest trees snap goes a twig as leaves rustle in the breeze okay so everyone's favorite bit twigs 
over here. I've got lots and lots and lots of twigs. So again, you can bring your fan out and you could fan as if it's blowing in your face as you're walking through. And sometimes you might hear twigs go in. Lots and lots of twigs going. Snap all around those and some sound different to others. Okay, so for this we do some listening exercises where we might try snapping at different sides to see if we can turn our head to that sound and then we'd go to the other side and we'd hopefully turn our head back to the other side to listen for the sound at the other side. What you might like to do is you could lay loads and loads of twigs on the floor and you could push your wheelchair over it and hopefully you might make some cracking sounds that way. Have a go. With feathers soft and a song so sweet, the robin flies, hops and tweets. So for this, we'd be exploring feathers to replicate the robin or you might have a little robin toy or some description okay where you can have your feathers so we'd use the feathers around different body parts you can imagine that little robin is hopping on your head <gasps> and then he wants to hop onto your shoulder and then he's going to hop all the way down your arm and he's going to sit on your hand you could wiggle those fingers and it might make him fly away so then we can watch the feathers and the robin fly to a different place. But then he's going to fly back up again and he's going to fly and he's going to walk down your arm and he's going to hop on your other hand. So if you didn't want him on there, you could wiggle your fingers and it would make him fly away. And he's going to land on the floor. Okay, you could then try this with different body parts encourage children to wiggle their head to get the robin off or shake the legs to get the robin off and they can watch the feathers fall nicely to the floor. Another one you could have with this one would be listening to bird sounds. And you can see if children are able to focus on that sound or if you've got a switch at home you could use a switch with the sound of a bird on, okay, or you could just do some tweeting yourselves, standing at each side to encourage children to find that sound and which side it's coming from, encourage them to turn the head and do some stretches to the birds. The forest can provide tasty food for us too, like this basket of berries this forest grew. So, this one. You could explore lots and lots of different fruits if you wanted. Fruits and nuts. Um, I've not got nuts here because we're a nut free school. But there's nothing stopping you having nuts at home. Um, and exploring them at home if you wanted. Okay. But with the berries you can smell them. Obviously you've got lots of different berries and they all smell very different to each other. Okay. You can feel them and you can roll them in your hands. If they're rolling ones. Or you can try and roll them. Okay. You could try holding them in each hand. If you wanted later on, I'll show you, you could paint with them. Okay, and we can also, with our berries, we could squeeze them in our fingers. So you might like to squeeze these berries and then see how they feel inside. See if, you can, see if you can find any seeds or anything inside them. You can feel the skin. The skin's really smooth. Okay. Whereas the inside's squishy. You could squish it between your fingers or if you wanted you could take your shoes and socks off again and you could squish them with your feet, moving your feet up and down in all the lots of different berries. So you can give that a go at home if you like. That's our story finished. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you can imagine how it would get all the sentences going together and how you can use them to find different likes and dislikes um, and bringing the outside in. So now 
I'm going to show you just a little simple activity that we might do afterwards um, where we'd use all the different things that we might find in the forest to create our own painting. Okay, so there's lots of different abilities and areas of strength in how we can use things. But the idea is that for this one, we're just going to use and we're going to move with our arms. We can do different things hitting it if we can hold them. Okay, or just all the objects can be placed underneath our hands and we just might move our own hands and see what happens. Okay, so you might like to choose a twig. And I've got my paints here. And I'm going to do green. So I might move up and down. Okay, and see what happens. Or I might like to use some orange. Might do some scratching with it. Okay, or you can try and roll it if you like. And then underneath it might roll and leave marks all in certain places. So that's what you could try and do with a twig. Or you could use your bark that we mentioned before. I'm going to go for orange bark and you could put it in there. Put it in your paint, you could paint it and then you could do some bark rubbing and printing and see what happens. You could do some scraping with your bark or you could just paint your piece of bark. Something else you might like to do. with a leaf you could put your leaf on you could paint round your leaf to leave leaf shaped stencils okay or you could just paint your leaf like this paint over the top of it squishing it between all your fingers and you could do some leaf printing. We've got lots of different shaped leaves, so that can sometimes look really nice. If you wanted, you could use your big fir trees and your big branches that you might have. And you might just want to dip it all in all the paint like that. It all over. Or if you just leave your hands on top of it for a feel and a smell, it might scratch around the paper like that, okay? So whatever comes out at the end, it'll be unique and personal to that child because it's how they've moved and how they've felt all those different things that we find in the forest to make their own piece of artwork. Okay, so you can keep layering and layering, you could let that dry if you wanted and then do the leaf prints over the top or you could do that and you could stick some twigs on. Okay, so if you've got some glue or some sellotape, some really strong glue, you could maybe make patterns with some twigs on it. You could pretend that they're leaves and you could make leaves out of different twigs and stick them on or you, can, you could pull bits of this, of your actual trees and leaves off and stick them on and then it would make a really nice smelling sensory piece of artwork as well okay so if you manage to bring the outside in at home and create your own piece of artwork or you explore different resources take some photos and send us some videos in because we'd love to see them but for now
relax now and you enjoyed the story okay so hopefully at some point soon you might be able to go out for an autumn walk of your own and enjoy feeling all the trees and looking at all the different leaves and crunching all those twigs under your chairs okay and under your feet bye